Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lost Planeswalker and you're here with me Jesse the Lost Planeswalker and today I have a dog meat the ever loyal commander deck this Naya commander deck is super super cool it's going to be one of the face commanders but I want to do my own homebrew and see how this deck goes so let's start out by reading what dog meat does so dog meat ever loyal is red green white or Naya legendary creature dog when dog meat enters the battlefield mill five cards then return an aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand whenever a creature Creature control that's enchanted or equipped attacks create a junk token so a junk is a new token type that we're going to see in this fallout and a junk token is an artifact with tap sack this artifact exile the top card of your library you may play that card this turn activate only as a sorcery junk is actually going to be probably pretty helpful and whenever a creature so not one or more creatures so the idea of this deck is ways in which to enchant and equip and just create as many tokens and things as we can to equip that stuff too to be able to get the most value out of the junk dog meat is probably my favorite character from playing fallout 4 i just fell in love with him and he was my little buddy everywhere i went so this was a very very fun deck that i was very much looking forward to doing so like always let's dive into those lands incredibly quick i did no building of this land base if you want to build a naya land base go ahead i don't think you have to go too extravagant here but i have forest mountains and plains um you're not gonna have anything that shares a creature type with dog meat obviously command tower is gonna be good you know all those other stuff but let's just move straight into the equipment and enchantments that you should be playing in order to get the best value and get the most junk as possible because that's all what fallout's about right hey i'm gonna need that duct tape somewhere right <laughs> probably not but you'll take it anyways so starting out we have all that glitters become brutes and blade of cell all that glitters is one of the best enchantments around because it cares about the number of artifacts and or enchantments you control and gives a creature plus one plus one for each of those so we're going to be creating a ton of enchantments we're going to be creating a ton of artifacts so you can make something that's really small really big really easily next is become brutes you're going to see a lot of cards here from the wilds of eldrain because i went a little different route with these enchantments Enchantments. You know, there was a lot of really easy ways to put enchantment auras on creatures and it didn't really feel bad for losing them because you get this and an additional thing with most of these cards from the Wilds of Eldritch. So I found as many of them as I could play and threw them all in here. Become Brutes is a sorcery with one or two target creatures each gain haste until end of turn. For each of those creatures, create a monstrous roll token. Basically, a monstrous roll gives it plus one, plus one in trample, which is even better to help get some of that damage through. And then finally, Blade of Selves, two generic mana. Artifact equipment, equip creature has Myriad. So whatever it is, if you have something that has an ETB or it just has some good value whenever you attack with it, you're gonna get a copy of each of those when you're attacking. So I really love it. Next up, we have Charming Scoundrel, Curse of the Werefox, and Elevir of the Wild Court. Charming Scoundrel has haste, and when it enters the battlefield, you either can discard and draw a card, create a treasure, or create a wicked roll and attach it to a creature. Curse of the Werefox is a sorcery that creates a monster roll attached to a creature you control, and then that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. So it's a nice, easy way to uh, clear some board space while enchanting your stuff. And Elevir of the Wild Court is an awesome commander from the commander deck for this, for two green, white, ledger creature, human, knight, Whenever Elevir of the Wild Court enters the battlefield or attacks, create a virtuous roll, attach it to another target creature you control. And it says basically for each other enchantment you control, that creature gets plus one, plus one. So not only are you creating big threats whenever this attacks, but they're just going to get bigger and bigger with the more you place. And then whenever an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So first off, Dog Meat is going to make us a junk, and then this is going to draw us a card. So love this. Next up, we have Embercleave, Giant Inheritance, and Gladwain casting director which is another commander that is actually going to be pretty spectacular embercleave for red red ledger artifact equipment with flash this spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control and when embercleave enters the battlefield attach it to a target creature you control equipped creature gets plus one plus one and has double strike and trample this is a game ender it is a really big threat because we're going to be creating a ton of tokens so this is just going to cost two red red to cast at flash speed and can come in to deal a ton of damage similarly giant inheritance is going to help us deal some massive damage because equip creature gets plus five plus five and has when this creature attacks create a monster roll and attach it to a target creature so another great way that this enchantment is just going to keep making more enchantments and attach it to more and more creatures and when giant inheritance is put into a graveyard from the battlefield we return it to our hand so we can just cast it again gladwin casting director one of my favorite cards and is super super powerful if you've never played this 
commander before. For one green and white, you get a legendary creature, human bard. And whenever this or another non-token creature enters the battlefield, you choose one. You can create a role, a sorcerer, or a monster and attach it to that creature. So whatever you need, the royal is going to put ward on it, making it harder to kill. The sorcerer is going to let you scry cards and the monster is going to make it so it gets trampled and plus one plus one. There's a lot of upside to this. You know, it doesn't work particularly well with the creature tokens because it has that ability. You know, obviously they thought about this and said, well, if you're going to make 10 creature tokens, you get 10 enchantments and, and an enchantress deck that's already broken. So they were like, no, 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 we can't do that. But this is a very good card anyways. and leads us right into Hammer of Nazan, Helm of the Host, and Lightning Greaves. Hammer of Nazan, probably one of the best cards in this deck list because when Hammer of Nazan or another equipment enters a battlefield, you can just auto equip it to a creature you control, meaning that the equip cost is basically nullified when you have this out. And Hammer of Nazan also gives equip creature indestructible. So, you know, this might be worth putting on your commander to help protect it. But next up, we have Helm of the Host. That is a legendary artifact equipment that at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary. If the equipped creature is legendary, then that token gains hate. So if we can pair that up with dog meat, we can just continue to make more more and more dog meats and make a lot of junk tokens to just go straight through our library to get to any of our win cons. So I really think that's awesome. And Lightning Greaves is one of the best equipped creature as haste and shroud. Shroud isn't the best here. You can kind of pop this between creatures to get around it, but it equips for zero. And I kind of like that ability a little better than the hex proof of swift foot boots. So that's why I included this in the stack. Next up, we have Lion Sash, Monstrous Rage, and Royal Treatment. Lion Sash is a great card that can help exile cards from graveyards that could become pesky, especially if you're playing against a graveyard deck. In addition, it also gets bigger for every card you exile, and you can reconfigure it to, you know, equip a creature. So I think that's really great. Monstrous Rage, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains a monstrous roll. So they also get plus one, plus one in Trample, which can turn, you know, a little threat into, you know, something that kills a bigger creature that's blocking it. And Royal Treatment is an awesome way to, basically, if uh, somebody's casting a spell, against your creature now they have to pay ward one and in addition to that for that turn it gains hexproof so you can kind of really easily protect and then help protect that later on next up we have shadow spear skull clamp and spell book vendor shadow spear one of my favorite cards you can give any creature plus one plus one trample and lifelink and then for one mana remove hexproof and indestructible from all of your opponent's stuff until end of turn skull clamp again especially in this deck because we're going to be making so many little tokens you know you equip it for one mana whenever a creature dies you draw two it's one of the most broken cards in the game it's very very good in here we have spellbook vendor at the beginning of combat on your turn you may pay one when you do create a sorcerer roll and attach it to a creature every turn we're just going to get another enchantment we're going to equip another thing and make more junk tokens next up we have sword of feast and famine sword of forge and frontier and sword of the animus sword of feast and famine gives a creature protection from black and green gives it plus two plus two and whenever equipped creature deals combat damage they have to discard a card and you get to untap all of your lands arguably in my opinion one of the best swords it's one of my favorites probably number one but close very close is sword of forge and frontier because it also gives protection from red and green but whenever a crypt creature deals damage you exile the top two cards of your library you can play them and you can play an additional land so it helps you ramp get you additional cards that you can play and sort of the animus whenever you attack you're going to get a basic and put on the battlefield tap and it just gives a little buff but we really care about it because it's just going to make us more junk tokens and we can put those lands to good use by casting more spells with those junk our next three cards are sir aramont the redeemer the reaver cleaver and trailblazers boots sir aramont the redeemer is great because when it enters it makes a monster roll token attaches it and equipped creature gets plus one plus one the reaver cleaver arguably one of the best cards out of the dominaria united commander decks equipped creature gets plus one plus one gains trample and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker create that many treasure tokens you're going to be able to create a ton of treasure with this and just be able to go off i've seen it happen again and again this is a threatening card and uh it looks threatening and it is and trailblazers boots is great because it has non-basic land walk which pretty much everybody in the game plays non-basics so this is just a way to deal combat damage or maybe swing out to win a game every game and the last two cards we have is whisper Whisper Silk Cloak and Witch's Mark. Whisper Silk Cloak similarly makes it so a creature can't be blocked and gives it Shroud so it also can't be targeted by spells or abilities. And Witch's Mark says you can discard a card and if you do draw two and then create a Wicked Roll token and attach it to one target creature you control. Now with all of the equipment and artifacts out of the way, before we
we dive into the bodies category, I'm calling it just because you're making as many as possible. I just want to say if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I'm going to be doing all kinds of videos talking about Fallout, the new Lost Caverns of Ixalan is coming out. I'm going to be doing a ton of videos talking about new spoiler cards, decks you can build, all sorts of stuff like that. So just stay tuned, subscribe, help me out, and you'll be able to see all of this fun stuff. Now going into the bodies category. These are just ways in which to create as many tokens as possible to, you know, swing in with and partially is the win con of this deck. You know, just create a ton of stuff, equip it all, and just swing in for massive, massive damage. So starting off, we have Adeline Resplendent Cathar. Her power is equal to the number of creatures you control. And whenever you attack, you create a 1-1 white human creature token that's tapped in attacking that player or planeswalker they control. A good way to start making a bunch of tokens and a great way for us to start equipping them all. Next up, we have Arasa of the Endless Web. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery, we get to create a 1-2 green spider with reach. Great against decks that have flying. And uh, we just get to make a ton of creatures over, you know, a turn cycle. Artifact mutation for a red and a green is an instant that says destroy target artifact. It can't be regenerated. Create X-1. 1 1 green sapling creature tokens where x is that artifact's mana value pretty great way especially if you can destroy something big next up we have aura mutation call of the copper coats and dragon lair spider aura mutation similarly destroys a target enchantment and we create x 1 1 green sapling creature tokens where x is that enchantment's mana value call of the copper coats is a super cool card from the new capenna commander decks that has strive which means we just pay an extra one in a white for an additional target it's basically just kicker but uh uh, choose any number of target opponents create x11 white human soldier creature tokens where x is the number of creatures those opponents control so if we have one opponent with 10 creatures and nobody else has anything we can just cast this for three mana but if somebody else has another 10 creatures well for two mana you can also get another 10 creature and dragon layer spider is quite pricey at two red red green green and has reach but whenever an opponent casts a spell create a 1-1 green insect creature token yep i believe this is a great way especially late in the game to make a ton of creatures very very cool Next up, we have Faldorn, Dreadwolf Herald, Felidar Retreat, and Fourth Year Oldings. Maybe? I don't know. Feldorn Dreadwolf Herald is great because when we cast something from Exile or cast a land from Exile, we get a 2 2 wolf creature token. And Dogmeat, what does he do? Exiles cards and we can play them. In addition, Feldorn does the same thing. You can discard a card, exile the top card of your library, and play it this turn. Felidar Retreat again says whenever a land enters the battlefield, you can make a cat or boost up your board. If you have 10 creatures, you can add a plus one plus one counter to each of them every time you play a land and fourth year olding is an x red white sorcery create x 2 2 red human knight creature tokens with trample and haste whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to one or more players this turn you become the monarch not only is this a great way to start the monarch if we're going to be able to ramp hard we get to make a ton of 2 2 knights with trample and haste which is excellent especially if we're equipping them with stuff that we care about dealing damage next up we have grand crescendo march of the multitudes and martial coop grand crescendo is x white white instant create x one one green and white citizen creature tokens creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn march of the multitudes says x green white white and has convoke which is awesome because if we already have a ton of creatures we're gonna get to convoke them all to pay for this spell create x one one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink and martial coop x white white sorcery create x one one white soldier creature tokens if x is five or more destroy all other creatures this is a great way where if the board is looking really bad we can kind of just come in, clear it out, and leave ourselves with a ton of creatures. Next up, we have Riz the Redeemed, Rocco Street Chef, and Scoot Swarm. Riz the Redeemed is great, and we really don't care about his first ability to make a 1-1 elf, but we care about his second to double all of our creature tokens. Rocco Street Chef very much cares about exiling and all that fun stuff, because whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell from exile, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature and create a food token. And at the beginning of each player's end step, everybody exiles a card from their library, and they can play it until their next turn so with this and our own exiling we're just going to be able to make a ton of foods and make all of our stuff super big and scoot swarm obviously one of my favorites it's just whenever you play a land you double it after you have six or more lands on the battlefield so this gets out of hand extremely fast next we have second harvest secure the wastes and song of totentans second harvest is an instant that says for each token you control create a token that's a copy of that permanent in addition this says token not creature token so all of our food all all of our junk all of our everything we can make with this deck we get to double secure the waste is a great instant that is just x and a white create x11 white warrior creature token and similarly we have song of totentan x and a red sorcery create x11 black rat creature tokens with this creature can't block and creatures you control gain haste until end of turn perfect
perfect. I love this effect. It just gets better and better. And lastly, we have Torian's Fist of the Angels and Wildfire Awakener. Torian's Fist of the Angels has a training, meaning whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. And whenever you cast a creature spell, create a one one green white human creature token with training. So that's pretty, pretty great. Next up, we have Wildfire Awakener, which does cost a little more, but its effect is definitely worthwhile. X1 red and a white that also has Convoke, so we can easily pay for this with all of our tokens. But when Wildfire Awakener enters the battlefield, create X11 red elemental creature tokens with whenever this creature becomes tapped, it deals one damage to target player. If you can make 10 of these, let's say X equal to 10, whenever you just tap them to attack, they just deal 10 damage. So that's already amazing. And last but not least, of course, we have the good stuff category. This is just great cards that maybe don't fit with the main synergy, but just help you out overall. So starting off, we have Benny Brock's Zoologist, Birds of Paradise, and Jessica's Will. Benny Brock's has Convoke, which is great, but at the beginning of each end step, if you created a token this turn, draw a card. Whether it's our turn or opponents, this is going to be super great. Birds of Paradise is a single green mana and can help us mana fix. It's a card I basically put in almost every deck because of how powerful it is. And Jessica's Will is another great card that costs three mana, and if our opponents have a bunch of cards in hand, we can get a ton of mana. We can look at the top three cards of our library and play them this turn. And if we have our commander out, we get to do both. Keeper of Secrets, Lanoir Elves, and Mary Esquire Rohan are next. Keeper of Secrets has First Strike in Haste and Symphony of Pain. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, Keeper of Secrets deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. Because we're going to be exiling so much stuff, this is just going to help us deal a ton of damage to everybody. Lanoir Elves, obviously really good. Just a little mana dork that we can play to help ramp super early. And Mary Esquire Rohan, I love because it has haste first strike when it's equipped and if you attack with another legendary and mary you draw a card so who doesn't want that next up we have nefelshni nature's lore and oran frostfang nefelshni is a beast demon with whenever you cast a spell from exile copy it you may choose a new target for the copy if it's a permanent spell that copy gains haste at the beginning of the next end step you have to sack it but it's really cool that you can get that double effect on everything nature's lore just helps you search for a forest and put onto the battlefield and oran frostfang gives all attacking creatures death touch meaning our little one ones turn into one ones with death touch and then whenever a creature deals combat damage draw a card who doesn't want to draw a bunch of cards off a lot of little death touching creatures next we have passionate archaeologist professional face breaker and sylvan anthem passionate archaeologist says commander creatures you have say whenever you cast a spell from exile this creature deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent another great way to burn down your opponents by just casting spells professional face breaker says whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player create a treasure and sack a treasure exile the top card and we can play it this turn and sylvan anthem one of my favorites and especially good if you're making a ton of tokens all of those green ones are going to get plus one plus one but a green creature entering the battlefield our control says scry one so if we're making a ton of things we can just basically scry our entire deck and put whatever we want right on top next up is teleportation circle toski bear of secrets and war storm surge teleportation circle is going to help us get those great etb triggers like maybe we want to mill more stuff with our commander every time it enters so we're just gonna do that every turn toski bear of secrets can't be countered has indestructible has to attack every combat and whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player draw a card this is not one or more this is whenever so we can draw a ton of cards off of toski as well and warstorm surge obviously whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control it deals damage equal to its power to any target this doesn't say non-creature tokens so all those creature tokens are just gonna ping our opponents for a ton of damage and last we have welcoming vampire and ren's resolve welcoming vampire says whenever one or more other creatures with power two or less enter the battlefield already control draw a card this only triggers once per turn but once per turn is good enough and ren's resolve exiles the top two cards and then until your next turn you may play those cards and that is it dog meat ever loyal probably one of the coolest commanders and i can't wait to see this more fallout stuff that comes out i'm so excited there's just so much good stuff and it is looking so so cool but if you enjoyed this i would really appreciate a subscribe you know help me grow a little bit more keep your eye out i'm gonna do a bunch more commander decks for this fallout because i'm so so excited about it 
you know, tell me what's a card I left out or a card I should include, or maybe I said something that doesn't work. Please leave it in the comments down below. I love to see what you guys say. And uh, that's it. If you want to help me in another way, please leave a like and share this video with a friend. Maybe if someone who's looking forward to this next set, I know I am. And of course, let's look at today's Scryfall card of the day, which is another uncard, which is pretty fun. Timmy Power Gamer. Just wait till I get my Leviathan. <laughs> oh boy, Timmy. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you later, planeswalkers.